Hello, this is Dr. Adam J. Bach. In this short audio presentation, we'll talk about total addressable market, specifically what it is and how to calculate it. Total addressable market is a relatively simple concept. It's very important for entrepreneurs to understand what it is and how to calculate it in the event that they are trying to pitch to investors, for example. But more generally, it's a useful concept for understanding how big your opportunity really is. Total addressable market, or TAM for short, is the annual revenue that your business would earn if you were able to get 100% market share. That is, if every realistically possible customer actually made the purchase. There's two different ways to calculate TAM. The first is called top-down analysis, and this is generally not such a great way to do it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about why in a moment, but the way you would do this is you would find some kind of market estimate um, and then make certain narrowing assumptions in order to take into account that not every customer out there might be relevant. Um, the problem with top-down analysis is more often than not, it overestimates market size. In addition, it sometimes encourages entrepreneurs to make statements about market size that aren't particularly reasonable, or to say things like, well, this market is so big that if we only got 1% of it, we would still be very successful. And while those kinds of statements sound good, they're actually not very compelling, either from a planning purpose or if you have to pitch an idea to investors. A much better approach towards estimating market size is called bottom-up analysis. Sometimes we call this counting noses because we're actually trying to identify the customers and how much they would actually pay. So let's take a look at an example because I think that's actually the quickest way to really get a handle on what we're talking about here. So let's imagine that you've decided you want to open a hair salon for kids. You've looked around and you've realized that there's lots of places to get your hair cut, but none of them are really that attractive for kids to go to and kids pre present certain challenges uh, when they're getting their hair cut. And so you want to target kids of a certain age. You want it to be decorated in a way to make it seem more fun. There might be balloons and so on. Maybe kids get candy afterwards to sort of entice them and keep uh, uh, and to keep them make them feel happier at the end. Uh, you have t show TVs around, maybe which are not showing sports, as in a guy's salon or whatever else might be playing, but instead have kids shows. You're hoping to market this to busy parents. The idea is that parents need to want to. Many parents don't cut their own kids' hair. They want to have their kids haircut. They want it to look nice. They want it to be relatively quick and they don't want it to be sort of a miserable experience. So a top-down approach to this might be that you find some kind of market report that says that the total annual market for haircuts in the city that you're targeting is say $4 million, right? So you've found this number through Google searching or some kind of market analysis from business libraries and you have this number that says this is the total market for all haircuts. And then you come up with some kind of estimate that says, oh, well, I think 25% of all haircuts are for kids. Well, I mean, that's a pretty good, doesn't seem too unreasonable offhand. And that would then give you a total addressable market of a million dollars a year. So this isn't a bad starting point, but there are some things you'd be very concerned about. So first of all, how on earth did the market report get the top line number? They said that the total market is $4 million, but you have no idea where that came from. Um, and that's always a worrying thing when you just have zero information about where a number came from. Second problem is, hopefully you had some rationale for this, but why did you pick 25% being for kids? Is 5% more accurate? What about 50%? So it's possible you could get a lot more information about these two things and potentially do a better job of confirming how big this is. Um, but as I said, I think this is a good starting point, but not where you'd want to end up. A better way of doing this would be to try a bottom-up approach. So for example, you could get population data, and from there it wouldn't be too difficult to figure out how many of the people who live in the city are actually children. Um, that kind of demographic data is often readily available, and you might come up with some kind of estimate, like there are 20,000 kids age 4 to 12 in your target city. 
Then you identify the location that you're hoping to place this salon and from there using for example zip code data you might be able to determine that roughly half the kids in the city live in within easy driving distance of the location and we might determine easy driving distance is maybe four miles or five miles. Um, and this is something you might adjust, right? Depending, you might do a survey or you might uh, talk to people to find out how far they're willing to drive in order to get their kids' haircuts. From there, you could do some research to find out average haircut prices, especially for children. You might visit salons or you might do some online research and you come away with some estimate for how much the average haircut is. And if you think about this, what you're really doing here, hopefully, is the same kind of analysis that your market research report generated, but this time we're getting all of the underlying data ourselves. Then we would hopefully need to find out how often kids get their hair cut. And let's say we're able to find some statistics that say that on average it's about six times a year. Or maybe you do a quick survey of families you know to find out how often they get their kids' haircuts. And from there, we can identify total addressable market. We have 10,000 children. The average haircut is $10. So that's $100,000, 10 times 10,000. And then that's six times a year which would be $600,000. And so we've identified a bottom-up analysis that shows that the total addressable market would be in this scenario $600,000. So now what I want to do is give you a slightly more realistic example. Um, this is an example from uh, Dan Olszewski's prior business experience. Dan is one of the instructors on this course. Uh, and he provided some background information, which to be honest was simplified a little bit in order to help show how this might work. In this scenario, we're looking at a company that sells printer parts. And so one way that it identified the total addressable market was simply by looking at the other companies in all of the companies in the industry to see how how much revenue they were generating from printer parts. And in that scenario, Dan and his colleagues were able to get information on all of the companies that were operating in the industry and how much, how, uh, what their total sales had been each year. Uh, this is going back a bit. This is going back to the year 2000. So this is some very old data. But regardless, this allowed them to then look and see that uh, they could then add up all of those sales numbers to say, well, it looks like the total market is about uh, in this scenario, a billion dollars, uh, 1,080, but that's in millions. So this is one billion eighty million dollars in the course of a year. But of course, in many situations like this, when we're trying to understand how big a market is, we'd like to look at this in multiple ways. And Dan and his colleagues came up with a much more sophisticated way of thinking about market size, not just currently, but moving into the future. And so what they did is they looked at data to get the installed base of the number of printers that were out there based on how many printers were sold each year, how many printers were being retired each year, uh, which then generates this installed base. So going back to 94, 95, 96, 97, you can see how many new printers were sold and how many were being retired out of service, which gives you your total installed base. And then based on an estimate for the total uh, usage of new printer parts for each printer, you can then calculate the market size. Now in this scenario, you can see that the final number at the end, uh, a billion, 80 million, is exactly the same as the one before. And that's obviously just meant to be uh, an illustration. You would not normally find that this works out just quite so beautifully but um, uh, this is at least a useful way of understanding what's going on here. This is much more likely to be the type of thing that you would see in a real business analysis. But for the for purpose of the course, you simply need to be able to generate total addressable market from fairly simple data. So remember that generating a robust estimate for total addressable market usually requires a combination of primary and secondary research. You're going to have to do some searching. You might find a market research report, but the odds are good you're going to have to do some primary data collection as well. And it might be finding out how people make purchases or getting some kind of survey data so that you can make some kind of, um, you can extrapolate from the data that you have. Usually that requires some perseverance and some creativity as well. The odds are good that for whatever opportunity you're looking at, there's not going to be a simple number you can find from a Google search. Um, Many industries do have that kind of information easily online. If you were, for example, wanted to find out how big the automobile industry is, uh, the, the market for automobiles in the United States, you could Google that and you'll get a number that will give you a rough idea. Um, but if you're about to launch a car company, that's not actually the number that you're really looking at because there's no way that you're going to be able to serve the entire automobile market and every single possible customer in the U.S. And so you'd still have to do some kind of research to figure out what narrowing or assumptions you need to take into account.
But the real problem for many entrepreneurs is that their product idea has no current market. If you're bringing something new, completely new to the market, then the data simply isn't going to exist. And so that means in order to generate a realistic total addressable market estimate, you're going to have to generate entirely new data, which is likely to require surveys and primary research. Again, for this course, you need to just be able to use the information provided to calculate TAM. So based on the number of potential customers, multiplied by, for example, the average price of the product, and then, and then make sure that that's calculated out per year. Remember, TAM is an annual number. So if customers generally make more than one purchase a year, you need to take that into account. If you have a pretty solid understanding of the example in this presentation about the hair salon, that should give you a pretty good idea of the type of question you're likely to see in a quiz or on an exam. So I encourage you to chat with colleagues, maybe generate your own example uh, to share with each other and see if you can come up with the right kind of calculation. Generating a TAM estimate is a pretty important aspect of entrepreneurial activity and it's something that you're likely to use if you ever decide to start your own venture.